got my reference. So on the left hand side here obviously is, is the, um, the printout of what I'm going to be working from. And on the reference I've actually, in pencil, you might not be able to see it, but I've just drawn a plumb line down here and I've drawn a horizontal line across there. Now, as we spoke about with the, um, when we did the fisherman, this plumb line and horizontal line can pretty much go through anywhere within the picture. You could even use the edge of the, um, the paper if you wanted to. You don't actually have to draw a line. It's just that I find drawing a line through the actual image itself a bit more helpful. Um, so once you've drawn that line, what you then need to do is determine where those two lines come on your paper to know where this whole image is gonna come within the larger area of your, um, your paper. So what I've done is I have already set the scale on these, and I'll just remind you about how we set the scale. So the scale is set by twisting the screw and moving it up or down. If you go towards this end, i.e. making this bit smaller, this bit gets larger. Okay, so that's how you scale up. So if you want to make your image a lot, lot bigger, you move the screw towards this end, this end gets bigger, this end gets smaller, your image get, um, blows up. <clears throat> so the way that I found my scale is I've measured from the top of his hat to the bottom of his shirt, like so. And then I just made two marks on my paper, okay, to determine the maximum height, maximum, um, uh, you know, the maximum height. And then I've measured the maximum width. So from the outside of the hat or the shoulder to the wrist, because that's pretty much the, the extremity of the, um, the image, you know, the widest part that I'm interested in getting in. And then I did two more marks. So one there and one on that side. Okay, so that's my widest part. That's my highest part and lowest part. Once I determined where all that is, I then measure in from one of those points to where I want that line. So I just, did, I just went from the wrist or the outside of the hand rather and in, and that gave me where I put my line. And then I just drew a straight line down there. And then to find this line, I, drew, I measured down from the top of the hat to that line and then drew a line across. Okay, because I already figured out where the, the maximum height, maximum um, width is. I could just measure from one of those points down and then that gives me the, my line. Okay, so now I know that when I move that onto here, it's A gonna be bigger and it's gonna fit this piece of paper. Okay, so moving on then. The first thing I'm going to do is um, start to take a few measurements just to determine where some of these elements are gonna come before I start to rough out the, um, the actual shapes. So, because it's a portrait, obviously I need to make sure that um, I get certain elements in the right place. So I'm gonna start off by just measuring up from my horizontal line to where his nose is. And transfer that across. Now, because I know that his nose is not on this line, it's kind of right of the line, my marks are gonna go over to the right here, but you could easily just put the marks all on here, then you could measure across to where the nose is and then just transfer the marks across if that's easier for you. So that's from there to there. So that's, I'm gonna just do some height measurements first of all. So the next measurement I'm gonna do is to his eyebrow, his left eyebrow. So I'm gonna measure up from there to there. So his left eyebrow comes about here. And then I'm gonna measure up to, I don't know, let's go to, and these are all arbitrary. You know, you can, you can pretty much pick any um, point to measure to, as long as you know what the measurement's for. So that's the brim of his hat up there. So it's quite high up. Let's do one to his lower lip. Because he's got a lot of um, beard, I can't really see his mouth very clearly. I can only really see his lower lip. So I'm not gonna worry too much about that. So I've done a load of um, vertical measurements, but what I don't know is where they then come in relation to um, the horizontal. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure across so this was his nose, remember? So I'm gonna measure him from the line 
uh, which on small measurements is not so easy with these things. So his nose starts about here, okay? So because I know that that was the height, because we measured from there up, now I've measured from the line in, so I know roughly, like you do on a map, you've kind of gone from point one to there, point two to there, and that gives you that point. <clears throat> so I know his nose is gonna start about here somewhere. Obviously, I don't know what the shape of the nose is, but I know his nose is gonna be in there. So now I'm gonna measure back to find, so this has found me the front part of his nose, so I'm gonna find the way the wing of his nose is over here now. So let's measure from the line across, and that comes to about there. And look how much bigger I'm going. So that's, that's how bigger his nose is gonna be on my drawing. So that's the actual size of his nose, or from that measurement from there to there. And this is how much further across I'm going. Okay, so it's coming up for about doubling it pretty much. So let, that's the wing of his nose. So let's just make a little mark there. Now, I'm gonna find where his hairline is on the right-hand side. So because I've started here, I'm just gonna keep measuring across these, these measurements because they're gonna be quite useful. So where his hairline is, let's spin it round. His hairline is about there. Measure to maybe where his ear starts. So his ear starts about there. Measure to the outside of his ear. And that starts about there. And then the brim of his hat. So the brim of his hat comes in somewhere there. Now, if you look here, this is kind of the angle of his head or the hat, I should say. So we've already got the angle between those two points because um, I've measured there, so from the outside to here, and earlier on we measured that point. So all I'm doing really is just drawing a line straight across there to give me the angle of the hat. So we've kind of done that, okay, to give me that angle. So now let's look for the eye socket. So what I'm going to do is measure up. So here's his nose, which is this point here. So I'm going to measure from here now up to where that shadow edge is there. Not where the actual, excuse me, not where the eye is, but where the shadow is. That's more important. So the shadow is or the shadow shape on his wing of the nostril, or sorry, wing of the nose is about there. So I'm measuring up, which comes about here. So once I've got this shape now, so I'm gonna actually start to um, try and draw the shape that I'm seeing. So if I look now, look, that shape comes downhill quite steeply, almost the same angle as the hat. So the hat is going like that. So that shadow shape is kind of coming down like so. What I'm talking about is that there. I don't know if you can see, so let me just put a line. That there, that shadow shape, which kind of goes down like that, which is almost the same as the hat. Next thing then is I'm just going to measure to where the width of his eye is. So coming across from the line, actually, yeah, let's look there. Spin it round. So his eye comes out to about here. So then I'm going to continue this shape, which comes down, across, and up like that, kind of makes a curve at the bottom part of his eye there. Let's find out where the edge of the ridge of the nose, uh, the eye socket is. So the ridge is about there. Uh, let's put that in. So the ridge 
of his eye comes down that way. Now I'm going to find where his eyebrow is, the top of the eyebrow. I'm going to measure up just above where we measured previously for the um, this shadow. I'm measuring up to just about there. Spin that round. So his eyebrow comes here or the top of the eyebrow, I should say. And that's got some angle to it. So let's just transfer that over. Oops, we've got another pencil. And that goes that way. So the other eyebrow, <clears throat> let's measure up to the outer part of the eyebrow, should hit that line. And it does. Okay. Now the forehead, which is obviously this part of his head, so let's just draw a line there. Kind of goes that way backwards. So what I'm going to do is try and figure out where that comes now. And I think it should come. Yeah, it should come pretty much from that point there. So let's just measure that, put that angle in. So that should be his forehead angle. Let's just check it, make sure it's roughly right. Oh, no, not quite right. Be a bit steeper, uh, a bit more upright. So let's just tweak that. Okay, now I think I've got probably enough points there that I can actually start drawing some of these up. Oops, sorry about that. So this, as we said, this point here is where the eyebrow meets here. So now we've got a curve that comes round. So I'm going to look to get that in. Before I do that, I just need to measure the width because it looks like it's a bit too far forwards. So that should come back a bit more. Yeah, quite a long way. Should be over here. Oops. Okay, let's do that all again. So his actual forehead should be well back. So even we make mistakes. <laughs> Live TV and all that. Let's try that again. So from the line to the eyebrow is there. The angle, sorry, let's measure up to the top of the eyebrow, is there. So the angle should be going up like so, like that. Okay, that's fine. So now then this curves starts to curve round. And I'm just gonna eyeball this now. And then we've got the nose intersecting. So the nose comes pretty much at the same angle as the forehead, slightly steeper. So let's just figure out where that should meet. So measuring up from the line to the curve of the nose. So where the nose curves, that's higher than I thought it was. So this then is going forwards because that's now part of his brow ridge. And then the actual nostril or the top of the nose comes down this way. Make sure that's the right angle, which it isn't. Needs to come down a bit more, like so. And then let's measure up where the top of the nose is. It should be about there. And the inside edge. Which is about here. So that needs to curve over at this point. 
how come that's so much lower than let's have a look. That's the bottom of the nose there. I don't know what happened then anyway, let's not worry about that. <coughs> so his nose is going to be in here somewhere. His beard is coming out. And down. Comes all the way down. Pretty much to this corner. Comes out. Then his neck. So this shape comes all the way back up. This was where his ear was. So, and this is where the inside edge of his hairline is. So that's pretty much vertical. Yep. And then, so what I'm doing now is I'm looking for where these angles change is I look across to where his eye is there, look. So I draw horizontal line to where the hairline is. This part of the line curve goes backwards. Then this starts to curve forwards. So his eye is gonna be in here somewhere. So this is going backwards. This then goes forwards. And then we're up into the hat, which is gonna be up there somewhere. Okay, so let's just check that brow ridge again. It's a little bit too far over. Yeah, so this needs to come over a bit more. The only thing with these measuring implements is that when um, you get into very small incremental measurements, they're not actually very accurate. So you have to sort of just judge by eye whether things are actually right or not and the reason being is that I don't know if you can see on the camera but because the two the two points are not actually in line properly when you're measuring and you hold this flat this one's actually closer to you than that one so over large distances it doesn't really matter but when you start to get into very small distances it becomes quite difficult to to judge it properly so you have to um kind of uh second guess it a little bit. So let's look up now. So if I draw a vertical line down his forehead, this shadow shape, which is in here, which kind of comes down and in. So this was his eyebrow, remember? It kind of comes back. And then let's see how far back it comes. It comes back to about there. Then it starts to turn turn down about the same angle as the rim of the hat. And then it starts to curve. So it comes all the way out to the edge of the eye socket. Somewhere over here. Okay. And that comes in and up. So his hair then comes from about here, this is his hair, and the hat starts, so if I look here, if I draw a line through that shadow, it actually meets the line of the hat, so the hat is actually coming out of his head at this angle it comes all the way over to this line. So let's just check that this is right because something doesn't feel right in a minute. Yeah, about in the right place. So why isn't that meeting up then? So the curve should actually come about here. So maybe I haven't got the angle of a hat quite right. Yeah, it's a bit too curved, too steep. So the curve comes 
talking about there, I might say, because it's very elliptical. It's um, quite difficult to see the angle that comes through there and then it comes back on itself. And then we come over this way. And then I need to see where, ah, so we inter actually intersect this part here. So I can actually come all the way down to that point and it continues back. Let's see how far it continues back. So it continues to about here. And I need to see, let's just double check that. Maybe a little bit wider. Now I need to because this is an arbitrary point over here, I'm not entirely sure where this comes in relation to everything that's over here. So I need to look back at the rest of my face to see where the hat actually comes in relation to, say, the mouth. So that's the bottom lip. So the hat actually comes to about there. So let's just measure that up. So where that sort of colourful bit of the, the beard is, or the lighter bit of the beard, I should say. So there we go. So if I draw a horizontal line across to here, that's actually where the back of the hat is. So that's where the hat comes to. So this is this bit here I'm talking about. So this line needs to come through to here where it's turning down. somewhere there. We'll check that again in a bit. I think that's pretty much should be turning. And then it goes into the shadow. So if I was to follow that line through the face, it should then meet up somewhere over here to make a nice sort of oval shape. Okay. Now let's find where his ear is. Ear is ear is his ear is that's quite difficult to um so across the nose to here so his ear is in here got some angle to the ear <clears throat> kind of like so and then the ear comes pretty much to the bottom lip so it's going to come in about here and then turns and then comes up and then turns over just about the eye level. So the eye level is going to come about there. So the ear is going to come about there. Quite a big shape. Just put the shape for the moment. I'm not going to worry about finessing it. Can't really see where the back of his head is because it's all in shadow. Just have a look at the ref the, the other reference on the computer and you can actually see it better on the printout. So the back of his head sort of comes here as the hat comes out and then he's got a bit of hair and it comes down to his shirt line which is sort of here. And then the angle of his shirt comes down sort of that way in this direction. And then to know where this point is, I need to look back up to reference the rest of what I've already drawn. It sort of comes in the center of the hair. So that should be just about, just about here is the shirt. And that kind of comes down like so. And it comes out and back on itself and out again. All these different angle breaks are quite important <clears throat> to get the shapes right. So 
So the front of his hair is about here. So we're just gonna indicate where that is, kind of curves over. And this is the underside of the brim. So I'm just kind of putting in here now. So the underside of the brim of the hat. Now what I need to do is try and find out where this point is. And this point here, normally, if you drew a straight line through it, would hit the forehead. Because obviously it's, this bit is actually the width of the top of the head. So let's try and find that point. So I'm going to measure up from the bottom line to where I think that line is, or point is, I should say. So it should pretty much be on the brim. A little bit, oh, actually we're over here, what am I talking about? So, why is that? Oh, we've got some thickness to the brim, haven't we? So, probably that. Uh, it should be about here. Let's come across, measure out, and see where that becomes. That uh, comes about there. Okay. So, the angle of this <coughs> hat is coming back that way. Like so. So then I can then indicate an angle there. Uh, let's just check that. Is the right angle? It's a little bit steep. Bit of an optical illusion, I think. Maybe a little bit steeper. Then I need to put in where the top curve of that hat is. And that comes. From about here. Let's measure across just to make sure it's in the right place. So that comes about. Okay, that's interesting. So that's not right then. Didn't think it was right. It comes a bit steeper. That's better. That's a bit too acute, I think. I think because my boards are a bit of a, a bit too flat. I can't quite see the angles very well. Okay, so this then comes over. And remember this then relates obviously to our original, roughly our original maximum height measurement. And the back of the hat is going almost the same way as the, this angle. Maybe there's some slight variation in it because it's, it's curved. And then I need to figure out where the back of the hat comes. So let's measure up from this point on the brim, which is about the top of the ear. I'm about there. <clears throat> measure it up. Okay, that's interesting. So it's nowhere near where I thought it was. Still got the brim slightly wrong then. Okay, what have you done then? <clears throat> this needs a bit more curve to it, I think. Probably what it is. That should curve a lot more. Like that. Okay. So let's lose this line just to tidy up. Okay, so now we've figured out where that is, I need to then see where the angle comes this way. And a little trick for finding angles, I mean, there's all sorts of ways of doing it, but what I sometimes do is I'll, I'll put the pencil on the edge of the line and then I'll look up the line and I'll put a little dot rather than draw the line um, all the way across because sometimes when you put the line there and you get it wrong you've got loads and loads of lines to rub out so just put put a dot and then just um look to infill the line afterwards so this is just an arbitrary measurement of the curve 
Okay, that's interesting. So the curve of the hat is actually up here. I haven't quite got that right then. So that needs to curve down. So the top of his hat, let's take another arbitrary measurement in here. That's coming there. There's a lot more curve on the hat than I've given it. That shadow edge there. So that's about that high. That's where this shadow is kind of coming in. Sort of comes down and back on itself. And this curves up and then start turn and then into the front of the hat. Okay. Rub that out, don't need those. So let's now look to find a little bit more of this area in here. Uh, this, this is where it all gets a bit fiddly now. So the shadow, if we come in on the shadow, what I'm looking at is where this kind of arcs over in a curve. And if I come across, it meets the lighter part of the other the other eye. So this is arcing over here. If I come across, the other eye is going to be, or the other part of the eye is going to be in here somewhere. So that shape. So now shapes become incredibly important. You know we talked about shapes in the abstract section. So what I'm looking at really is what shape is this bit of light kind of making. You know, if you were to take that as a an actual shape, um, what shape is it, or how do we draw it? So, it kind of comes back and out all the way to the edge there. Then it kind of comes down, comes back on itself. Then it comes down, comes across. It would come in, and then got the eye folding in there somewhere. Okay. But the actual eye would then sit somewhere within this part here, because it kind of links up with that line. There. And then there's the eye fold which sits over the top. Okay, and then there's the base of the eye which will come out sort of there. So that's probably enough. Enough for the eye. So the nose then, let's see if we can figure out what's going on with the nose because it's sort of gone wrong here. So I'm looking now at where this line is and then where the nostril should start. So let's just remeasure that. So it's about, it's a lot shorter than you would think it is. The nostril is about there and it should come out as we've already measured to about here. Now, Let's just draw a line up. Where does that hit? So that hits our bit of shadow there. So that's where the wing of the nose needs to come out to. The wing of the nose is here. How far up does it come? So it comes up to, so that's the base of the nose about here. The base of the nose will come up the hill, and then we've got the moustache shape coming out, which comes back down his face. It will come across his cheek, up a bit, down a bit, across, and then we're into the hairline. Sort of does, sort of does that. So this then is all beard. Um, 
the let's just sort his nose out a little bit more so his nose wing of the nose is there the nostril is sitting inside so just all the shadow shape again and the shadow shape kind of comes up and it comes forwards and then down into the bulbous part of the as it sort of goes down and then around the corner and then the top part of the nose kind of comes down like so <clears throat> and then this is the underside of the nose and then you see the tiniest little sliver and then the tiniest little sliver of the far cheek just popping down behind the um behind his moustache and then the moustache needs to come out because if I look up here, it's actually past his nose and mine's behind the nose. So his nose is there, so his moustache needs to come out to here, down, and then we're into all the other stuff around his mouth. So then this is coming, this sort of bit of the shadow of his beard, moustache is there. And then we're into the bottom lip, which is here. That kind of curves in. And then we're into all the hair, all down in here. This is all going to be hair, which will shade in in a bit. His shirt then starts to come out of his neckline. Because we've done all the work up here now, everything that we do in the arms, in the hands, in the other face needs to relate back now to everything we've done over here. So if I'm trying to find, say, where the shirt now here starts, I have to relate it back to the rest of my drawing. So if I look up, where does that hit? And it pretty much hits just inside the shadow shape. So we come down, so the neck is going to start about, about all the, rather not the neck, the, um, the shirt meeting the neck starts about there. And the angle comes out this way. Okay, so let's just see how we're doing. So his neck, actually looking at the other reference, does come straight down. And there's a little bit of a tiny bit of shadow there. And then we've got the uh, fold of the shirt there. coming down and then we've got the shirt fold coming down this way like so and then that then curves over this comes down so it makes an S shape it comes down and then into where the arm is going to come. So let's figure out where this arm is then. So because I've got two intersecting lines, I know the arm is going to come through at this point, which is below the beard, and I think it's about there. And then let's just measure the angle of the arm. So the arm is actually very steep. So I think it's going to come down to about there. So it comes down in this direction. If you leave that. So the arm comes down. And let's see how far down it comes. So I can actually measure now from that point at an angle along that top of the forearm. So the arm is actually this long and then I can measure down from there to see if that's in the right place which I don't think it is needs to come up a bit that's a good guess so his arm actually needs to come to there because it's not a straight line so even though I drew it as a straight line there's muscles here so this kind of makes an S shape it's not a natural straight line so this is the forearm muscle there, comes across, and then we're into those folds in the shirt, which 
comes down that way. So I can actually measure across across the arm now, see the the width. So the arm should be to there. Measure in from the line to see where the elbow comes. <clears throat> wow, there we go. Look, the elbow should be right out here. Uh, so why is that then? So if that points there, how can that be behind it? Just measure into there then. Make sure that's in the right place. Which it isn't. Crikey. Look at it, it's all the way over there. Why is that? Then? Didn't do something right there, did I? Measure that down. So that's where his forearm should be. So let's get rid of all this after saying all that. <coughs> so now let's measure across from um, that point to that point. So there we go. So then his forearm will come this way and then back up. So it's obviously a bit thicker than I gave you. Across the arm. Okay, that's better. So then the elbow will be in here somewhere. Yep, so the elbow is going to be there. And the shirt will come out of this point. Come down, goes out, and then starts to come round under the elbow and then obviously into all those folds that go around his sleeve. <clears throat> so next then let's find where his shoulder is up at the top here. So where does that intersect the line? So his shoulder comes about from there. So this line of should come back and then and go up into a crease, which then goes then up into the collar. So the arm, the shoulder comes all the way out to out to here. Quite wide. So then we can start to curve this over, down, and then into the shoulder ridge. And then this shoulder is actually coming fairly vertically. It comes pretty much just straight down. Quite a long way. Let's just see how far it does come down. about there and then we're actually into a straightish line which comes and then meets up where our elbow is over here and then come back this way and then up like so so then that's the underside of our arm the inner part of the arm will come out from about here so it's inside the crease so that was that's our crease where the arm meets the sleeve but the inside of the arm starts a bit sooner and that comes up to about there so let's find roughly and it goes all the way up so if you were to draw the line all the way up it would come right up to the shoulder so let's just see where that comes to it actually intersects this this bit up here so maybe we're not quite wide enough because that's actually doing that let's just check it again so it's further in than i thought it was okay so that's there so this has got to come 
for this angle. Let's say. Just move that. And obviously then you've got all the relevant creases that the shirt makes um, coming off of that through the tension of his arm being bent. This then is the front of his shirt, collar, coming down, creases. And then we've got all the circular type creases going, because this arm actually is a cylinder. So if you think of it like, like that, then all of these creases are kind of curving over, over the arm as they're tensioning. So we'll worry about those afterwards. That comes down there, and then we've got the muscles or lap coming down here, and then shirt goes down and away. So now let's measure the width of his body. Not too far off. So coming across, let's measure the inside width. The body comes to about there, or the other side of his shirt, I should say, comes to about there. And that would come up, and then we actually got the back of the um, the person's hair who's being cut coming from about the elbow height, starting to intersect where his forearm is. So I'm just going to indicate roughly where that is to start with. So let's now find the um, the forearm. Just going to come up this way, and then his wrist is through here. It's very, it's kind of making quite a nice curve, quite a soft, slow curve. And then at this point, we've actually got the uh, wrist joint just kind of coming through there and then we're into the starting into the hands so let's just see where this hand intersects the line which is about where we put it so this is the wrist or palm i should say it comes up and it's pretty much making a almost a straight line up to about there. So we'll just simplify the hand for the moment. Let's measure out from here to the finger. Those fingers going to be somewhere there. And then we've got the shape coming up. Now I'm going to relate all this back now to where we drew the face. So that's below the bottom lips, about chin level. Mine's starting to creep a bit high, look. So something's going wrong there. So let's just check again. What have I done wrong? <clears throat> So this finger needs to come only to that height. So all this is wrong, let's change this. So this is the height of the middle finger. And that comes out from the line to about there. Okay, so that's my middle. This finger here I'm talking about. So if I come off of that finger and then draw a line back, and then it kind of comes in, down, and then we're back into what we had originally. 
we sort of get this sort of cut in, cut in sort of shape. And then this thing becomes sort of upwards. <clears throat> uphill and then you've got knuckles and someone going on there and then we've got the forefinger coming back that way and that needs to let's see how wide it is that's about right where does that come to so i'm measuring to where his knuckle is now where the comb is um Kind of intersecting, kind of intersecting his hand. So this is where the knuckle or the shadow shape of that knuckle is, and the comb is coming up this way. And if I look back to my original um, area, so the moustache, so we're about on track now. So we're about in the right area. So this then. So that angle there is about the same angle as the hairline, so it's re repeated. And now I'll come back. And then we've got the thumb, which comes from the back of the comb. Then we get the break in the muscle or the joint, I should say. That's going to come down here this way. And that links into the wrist joint and then curves over and then back to where we started. It's all guesswork at the end of the day. Drawing is 100% guessing. You know, um, there's the accuracy only comes from just training your eye into like these smaller shapes and those kinds of things. But, you know, when all of this um, kind of laying in sort of structural stuff that I did at the beginning, you could ignore all that if you didn't want to do it. You don't have to do that. But what it does do is it just it, it makes the drawing part afterwards a bit easier because now that I'm starting to get into all the hand and this hand over here, I'm not going to do all of this stuff again when I'm drawing all this over here. I just refer back to it. So in a way, it kind of it makes it a bit easier when I start to then go, say, down into this head. I don't need to do all that intricate measuring that I did up here. I can just kind of free, you know, just guess it based on all the measuring that I did up there. Right. Okay, so that's kind of kind of how I work anyway. But the reason to do is even if you don't do any of this sort of distance measuring, really look, you know when I talked about um, where does say that comb come in relation to the moustache? Yeah. You need to look horizontally, vertically and diagonally to see where things mm, intersect yeah. one another. Yes. All right, rather than rather than say measuring distance from A to B, yeah, you need yeah. to see where things intersect, and then you should then make sure because if your hand is all the way up here, then you know you've gone wrong. You know already that it's not in the right place yeah. because it's, yeah. it's intersecting. Because what happens is when you're drawing, say something like the hand, you get so focused on, you know, all the little intricate details of where does that change angle, where does that change angle. You don't necessarily look at it in relation to the rest of the drawing, so it can kind of it can sometimes get bigger and bigger and bigger, or it sometimes gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So that's what you have to try and do. You have to always try and relate or at least kind of look horizontally and vertically to see what it intersects. It's very, right. very important. Let's use some charcoal now and get some tone on, on, the, on the sketch. So for that, I'm just going to use my willow charcoal. I'm just going to tilt the board just a teeny bit more towards me so I can see what I'm doing. So for this now, I can, as I said before, I can actually smudge and do all sorts of things with it. So all of this, um side of his head i'm going to shade all of this in just put some tone through the through the whole area like so i'm going to continue that down into his beard maybe a bit into his neck. And now, because this is charcoal, what I can do is I can use my finger and I can just smudge this. 
and soften it all off. Keep it all nice and soft. Coming down into his neckline. And obviously I'll darken this up later, but for the moment it's it's just to get some tone on the on the sketch. So we've got some more tones coming up here. On the hat, just a bit. On the back of the hat. So you'll notice as well that I'm not really worrying too much. Whereas if this was pencil, um, I would be worrying a lot more about the direction of stroke. But because this is charcoal, um, I don't really need to worry because I can just smudge it. So it's a bit more akin to painting as it rather than just drawing. Um, let's just darken this up a bit more. There. <clears throat> a bit more tone under the brim of the hat. His hair in. So then we've actually got some shading or some tone down the side of the head and also into the eyebrow and the. So just put this in with a flat tone to start off with. All the way through. Just even that out a little bit. So there's some tone on this side. Under the nose. Into his moustache. With a little bit of tone on the wing of the nose side of the nose, I should say. <coughs> Coming around the cheek. So because our light source is kind of coming from this direction, all of these areas which are facing the light are um, quite bright as it starts to turn away. So this is now going into the side of his face. These are receiving less light, so they become more half toned and then going into the shadow. So in actual fact, I can probably darken this up a lot more. Just using the side of the charcoal. Give me more tone. Under the hat, just put a little bit of tone through the ear. It's very dark through the back of the back of the ear. Back of the neck, so it's just even this out a little bit.
So a little bit of tone in the beard. <coughs> can actually darken his eye up a touch. Just the lash and possibly a little stab at where the um, pupil is. But the pupil and the, the shadow actually merge. So I don't want the pupil to be isolated. So what I'm going to do is bring the shadow all the way across from the deeper part of the shadow all the way into his eye so they're all linked together so that comes to about about there and then we've got the lower part of the under eye and then i'll take the putty rubber now to get some little um bits of detail all i do is i spin the putty rubber to give me a point and then I can actually use this then to manipulate the, the charcoal to give me better shapes or to um, shape up what I've already just put down there. Just make his eye a little bit more detailed, a bit more tone in here. coming up into the eyebrow. So that's enough there. And then on this side, a bit more tone. Soften that out. Okay, and then what I might also do as well is just to help the face show up, just put some background shading in because obviously, <clears throat> where the lighter elements of this face are against the white paper they won't show up so if I carve in with some nice dark this face will show up a lot better so again I'm just going to carve in down the nose side of his face. <laughs> round the moustache. That's uh, round his eyelash rather, sorry I should say. Let's <laughs> fill this in. I'm my hat a little bit there. But then now what I can do is, if you look, I can just take my thumb and I can just soften off, soften off the edge really nicely. I get a very soft, soft edge, which obviously with this with pencil, be a lot, a lot harder to do. A little bit more dark. Here. And then I can also create some effect by smudging this and get some different tones in the um, 
in that darker area. So it's not just one flat tone and I can also smudge it out to create an effect. What I'll also do as well is I'll take this down into the into the beard a bit. <clears throat> Get my putty rubber. And I can pick out then some lighter elements within the in the beard against that slightly grayer backdrop of tone. Just make that a bit darker. A bit more tone in the eye section. Darker under the nostril. Okay, and we can come darker under the brim. You can make this a little bit stronger. Going to use the putty rubber and just carve an edge just on the front edge of the hat. Just to get it show up a bit better. <clears throat> All this is hair. Just put a bit more tone in there. Got a bit more tone here. Back of the shirt. Link all the shadow together because it's all just dark. <clears throat> it comes out then into the shoulder. Got some of these creases in the shirt. I can block in. All of this nice dark and down his back of his arm. There, a bit more tone 
under his neck. And then actually his other shoulder comes out through this area here, through the back of his beard. Which then links obviously into his, behind his hand. So this is his wrist. Which comes down. Forearm here. That comes down. Shirt kind of creases its way up and then back. The front of the shirt which comes through here. Tidy this edge up a bit, a bit wide. comes up to the thumb. These are the fingers. Comb. Yeah, that dark behind there. Yeah, I'll just shoot the putty rubber to knock out a bit of it. Let's use some charcoal now and get some tone on, on, the, on the sketch. So for that, I'm just gonna use my willow charcoal. I'm just gonna tilt the board just a teeny bit more towards me so I can see what I'm doing. So for this now, I can, as I said before, I can actually smudge and do all sorts of things with it. So all of this um, side of his head, I'm gonna shade all of this in. Just put some tone through the through the whole area like so I'm going to continue that down into his beard maybe a bit into his neck And now, because this is charcoal, what I can do is I can use my finger and I can just smudge this and soften it all off. Keep it all nice and soft. Coming down into his neckline. And obviously I'll darken this up later, but for the moment it's, it's just to get some tone on the on the sketch so we've got some more tones coming up here on the hat just a bit the back of the hat. 
So you'll notice as well that I'm not really worrying too much. Whereas if this was pencil, um, I would be worrying a lot more about the direction of stroke. But because this is charcoal, um, I don't really need to worry because I can just smudge it. So it's a bit more akin to painting as it rather than just drawing. Um, let's just darken this up a bit more. There. <clears throat> a bit more tone under the brim of the hat. Pulling his hair in. So then we've actually got some shading or some tone down the side of the head. And also into the eyebrow and the. So just put this in with a flat tone to start off with. All the way through. Just even that out a little bit. There's some tone on this side. Under the nose. Into his moustache. A little bit of tone on the wing of the nose, the side of the nose, I should say. <coughs> Coming around the cheek. So, because our light source is kind of coming from this direction, all of these areas which are facing the light are. Um, quite bright as it starts to turn away. So this is now going into the side of his face. These are receiving less light, so they become more half toned and then going into the shadow. So in actual fact, I can probably darken this up a lot more. Just using the side of the charcoal. Give me more tone. Under the hat, put a little bit of tone through the ear. Very dark through the back of the back of the ear. Back of the neck, so it's just even this out a little bit. little bits of tone in the beard. <coughs> Can actually darken his eye up a touch.
just the lash and possibly a little stab at where the um, pupil is. But the pupil and the, the shadow actually merge. So I don't want the pupil to be isolated. So what I'm going to do is bring the shadow all the way across from the deeper part of the shadow all the way into his eye. So they're all linked together. So that comes to about about there. And then we've got the lower part of the under eye. And then I'll take the putty rubber. Now to get some little um, bits of detail, all I do is I spin the putty rubber to give me a point. And then I can actually use this then to manipulate the, the charcoal to give me better shapes or to um, shape up what I've already just put down there. Just make his eye a little bit more detailed. A bit more tone in here. Coming up into the eyebrow. So that's enough there. And then on this side, a bit more tone. Just soften that out. Okay. And then what I might also do as well is just to help the face show up, just put some background shading in. Because obviously <clears throat> where the lighter elements of this face are against the white paper, they won't show up. So I carve in with some nice dark. This face will show up a lot better. So again, I'm just going to carve in down the nose. side of his face. <laughs> round the moustache. That's uh, round his eyelash rather, sorry I should say. Let's fill this in. Gonna have my hat a little bit there. But then now what I can do is if you look, I can just take my thumb and I can just soften off, soften off the edge really nicely. I get a very soft, soft edge, which obviously with this with pencil, be a lot, a lot harder to do. A bit more dark. Through here. And then I can also create some effect by smudging this and get some different tones in the um, in that darker area. So it's not just one flat tone, and I can also smudge it out to create an effect. What I'll also do as well is I'll take this down in 
into the into the beard a bit. <coughs> Get my putty rubber. And I can pick out then some lighter elements within the in the beard against that slightly greyer backdrop of tone. Make that a bit darker. A bit more tone in the eye section. Darker under the nostril. Okay, and we can come darker under the brim. You can make this tone a little bit stronger. Putty rubber and just carve an edge just on the front edge of the hat. Just to get it show up a bit better. <clears throat> All this is hair. Just put a bit more tone in there. Got a bit more tone here. Back of the shirt. Link all the shadow together because it's all just dark. <clears throat> and come out then into the shoulder. Got some of these creases in his shirt. I can block in. All of this nice dark and down this back of his arm. In there, a bit more tone under his neck. And then actually his other shoulder comes out through this area here. 
through the back of his beard. Which then links obviously into his, behind his hand. So this is his wrist. Come down. Forearm here. comes down, shirt kind of creases its way up and then back, front of the shirt which comes through here. Tidy this edge up a bit, a bit wide. And that comes up to the thumb. Into the fingers. His comb, and that darker behind there. Yeah, I'll just use the putty rubber to knock out a bit of this. 